Hey everyone, Joe Menza here. Welcome to another painting on my journey in oil painting. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different. I've kind of sped it up a little bit. I don't think I'm really qualified to show anybody how to paint. So in these earlier paintings, I think uh, uh, I'll explain to you what I'm doing. And uh, this one here went a little long. It was probably about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, what I'm painting on here is I'm using a piece of, uh, it's uh, 300 grams, uh, it's a very thick piece of watercolor paper that I've applied a white acrylic gesso to, three coats, and I'm using some new paints. Before I was using regular oil paint, and this is water-soluble oil paint, so I thought I'd give this a try and see how it reacts, and I'd approach it from a watercolor painter standpoint. So there's gonna be some hits and misses here as I, I uh, go along, and I don't want this video to be overly long, but essentially I'm using the same colors that I use in watercolor, uh, Lizarin Crimson, Cad Yellow Hue, they're all Windsor & Newton again, um, and uh, Burnt Umber, ultramarine blue and so I'm using like the basic colors uh, I think I used a little bit of sap green in this one uh, burnt umber and titanium white so basically I'm working on these clouds and already I've approached it from a from as, as I would approach doing a watercolor sky in a sense um, and I'm just kind of experimenting with some things as I go through here, my little little journey in, in this process. And so I'm trying some things and dabbing some things out and just seeing how it reacts. My head's getting in the way quite a bit. But as you can see, I'm way overdue for a haircut thanks to being... Uh, all the uh, places being closed. I really need a haircut. <laughs> um, that being said, I'm using the Hake brush. And I will say, last time I used the Hake brush, if you watched the first oil painting, and I washed it really good. And I wanted to see what the results were, but I also used a little mineral spirits. I used an older Hake, so I didn't worry too much about it. But when I picked it up today to use, it was really stiff. I mean, I had to wash it out again. So I'm using it again here, and I've reserved the medium and small hake that I have for doing oils. So as I'm doing here, it's kind of a, a process of, you know, how should I say, just kind of seeing what works here and what doesn't. And I'm using as a thinner, I'm using water. I've got some water-soluble linseed oil on the way, and I'm going to see how that works out. Uh, now I'm adding some more blue here. I'm just trying to get a sky that I'm happy with. Um, again, because it doesn't fully react like a watercolor. In fact, as I'm painting along here, I'm getting a little, a little nervous. <laughs> um, and I said to myself, self, no matter what happens here, I was preparing myself for a disaster. No matter what happens here, I'm going to post this um, so people can see, you know, when you start a, start something like this, you're, you're, uh, you're a rookie, you know, and you can see what happens to other people as they go along. So by no means am I trying to show people uh, how to paint here yet. Um, but you can see what I'm doing. Maybe you can see something you would enjoy. And the water-soluble paints, I will say, they don't really have the odor, and you're not messing with any kind of thinner, and the brushes wash out very nicely. So if you are curious about oils or you once did oils and you don't like the toxicity, then I think something like this might be something you'd enjoy. I'm coming in, I'm just trying to make a nice cloud pattern. One of the things about oil paints, as you already know, is that they don't dry fast. So um, you have some time to play around. 
try to get things to work. Now, I don't have any panes gray or black in this set that I ordered, um, and I'm so used to using those. I know you can make your own, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <clears throat> um, the gray, as you can see, I've got some gray here. I mixed the primaries. Um, I'm kind of blending this in here. Now, last time I, I used the liquid white. Uh, underneath. I didn't want to do that here because these are water soluble. I may experiment with that later. Um, but here I'm just trying to soften things and uh, do some blending and come up with a sky that I'm relatively happy with. And I mean, I do like the fact you can go on top with white and it fits, and so you can make some nice, you know, some nice clouds. It's sort of a no-no in watercolor to use white because it's the way it stands out against the other colors. Not that you can't do it, but, uh, you know, in, in watercolor, you're going from light to dark, and you don't have to worry about that with oil painting. Uh, what you do have to worry about is is putting on thinner layers and then thicker uh, no, how does that go? Yeah, thinner layers and then thicker on top. Um, if you have a thin paint, it, 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 thick, thinner paint sticks to thicker paint, so the fat, I guess, has to build up on top. So if you don't do it that way, the paint won't stick if you're trying to do wet into wet. So that's where you thin out the paint using either like the linseed oil or something along those lines to thin it out so that it sticks. Now, one of the things I notice, and it's same, here it's even more so than watercolor, is that you, you're you blending your colors on the palette and on the, on the canvas or whatever surface you're using. And so when you do that um, and you have white there, you know, it, all the colors will get into everything. So you, you, you can become a mud maker really quick. Um, so here I'm just, I'm still going back to that sky and kind of fussing around. Now I'm spraying a little water on here. And because it's water soluble, I figure I can, I can do what I do with uh, watercolor. But it doesn't leave the spatter the same way which is fine. Um, again, I'm learning what I can and can't do. Um, I've added some grays in here. As I'm mixing on my piece of paper I have off camera, I'm seeing, you know, I can make some different grays and things. I've also put in a little mountain range down below. Um, and we're gonna see what we can do with that. Mountains have always been like one of my favorite things to do. So I figure this time, I did last time I did a little riverbank and this time I'm doing a, a mountain to see how it comes out. So again, I'm coming back in with white. I think one of the nice flexibilities of, of oil is, is you can keep building up layers on top. So if you don't like the way it came out, you can go over it and over it, you know. Um, so now I'm pulling out the credit card. Let's see what happens here. But I'm going to scrape in mountains as I would if I was doing a watercolor. Um, in the future, I may do a traditional more of a paint for the mountains, like a white or use a oh a palette knife or something. But uh, I just wanted to see how it worked here. I think it looks cool, but it, it just exposes totally the paper underneath. Um, unlike scraping when you use watercolor, there's still a little color underneath. This like totally takes everything off. I'm coming in with a little blue mixed in with the white and just creating a shadow side of the mountain. This is one of my little typical scenes that I like to paint with a little mountain range. And the credit card trick does work here. Um, so if you enjoy doing that, I mean, it's, it's fun. It's, it's just as fun, really, as, uh, as watercolor. But it does leave, like, a lot more white. 
So I'm just going to take and I'm just blending in a little bit there. So it's just not so stark. And now I'm blending in a little bit of foreground here. And interestingly, you know, when I first started out, I put, uh, I tried to do sort of a wash. And it just doesn't lay in the same way as watercolor. So really, you have to just paint that in as opposed to, you know, watercolor. When you do that, it absorbs into the paper and it like does the work for you. But in oil painting, you just have to you basically paint it. I mean, if you water it down too much, it's not going to give you that same nice sheen like it does in watercolor. One of the things I've, I've kind of found out. And if anybody's painted in oil, obviously, a lot of people are, this is obvious. This is, you know, obvious to you if you've used oils for a long time. You're cur curious to see what's happening with a, a, a new person. Luckily, on my side, I have painting experience in watercolor for, you know, at least three years. So I've kind of got an idea of how to lay paint on paper to a degree. And when I did watercolors, I did a lot of thick painting. But it, it reacts differently. Um, you know, two different mediums, obviously. So now I'm laying in a little bit of, little bit of grass here on the bottom. I've still got that open area in the middle, but it doesn't, in watercolor, when you leave like the open area, it kind of stains a little bit. And this here, it's just stark white. So again, another thing I just, you have to paint it in. It's not, the oil's not really going to do any work for you. There are simple things you can do, like let the bristles of the brush do easy leaves and easy shapes and all that is there. Um, but the oil isn't going to give you the same sort of, uh, how can I say, like uh, when you paint with watercolor, things happen sort of magically <laughs> and when you're done it looks it just looks really good and it's like the watercolor does things it has a mind of its own um but with the oils you really have to paint that i mean you have to really be deliberate um you can't rely so much on letting the paint spread at least that's what i'm seeing now this is where i'm at now remember that when you're listening to me um these are just my thoughts in going along. And I've put some a little bit of a tree kind of sticking out to the side. Um, you'll see me mess around with that. I'm coming in with a fan brush, some yellow ochre, and I've kind of totally just kind of butchered that a little bit. Not having the same sort of success with that is, and I think it's because I'm I'm so reliant on like Payne's gray and darker colors, um, but uh, it's not quite what I'm looking for in the overall painting. Now I'm going to try scratching in some branches here. Is another little watercolor trick. You can definitely do that here. Um, you can go back and. Put a little dark on the scratched areas to make more of a trunk, but I think it's I think it's better to paint that in for the most part. Maybe on oil it looks a little cheesier to me. I, I don't know. <laughs> And I get a little red on my brush. I don't know how that happens, so there's some weird red in there. But in coming back and putting some uh, cad yellow, trying to get some bright highlights in there. But as you can see, when you press it in, you know, you pick up the other paint that's on the paper. When you're doing this in watercolor, you don't really pick up paint on your brush from the paints that are on the paper. Um, 
but with oil you will you'll you'll blend it into what's already there because the watercolor dries in just a few minutes so something to keep in mind now I shut my camera off I wish I hadn't you notice the clouds have changed on top I took a synthetic brush and I just kind of blended it a little bit and the clouds look much better and softer I looked up at my camera and I'm like ah wasn't recording so a little bit of a snafu there but I didn't want to give up on the video so hopefully uh, it's not a problem but as you can see they're softer and again that softer brush blending um, is something you can do now if you've watched the tv painters that use the liquid whites and the magic whites and things i haven't really tried some of the little reflective things now but um in 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 painting this i mean i don't know i i think do i want to say this i don't know if i want to say this but uh it's not something you really need i mean I think it could add to some blending techniques, but um, I'm not using it here. And so I don't think it's something that's really necessary. I think if you're following that style of painting, it's something you can get away with not using. Um, I was concerned that I wouldn't have some blending luck. Um, but it's possible because I used gesso and I used paper that it's, it's, uh, maybe, maybe it blends a little differently. The gesso is a hundred percent dry. Um, it's acrylic and you put it on in like three coats and it, uh, it dries a hundred percent before you start. But, uh. I thought it would be harder to blend. You'll hear like Bob Ross and things say, oh, you'll have a really hard time if, you know, you'd be really having a hard time painting if you didn't have that white on there to begin with, making the canvas slick. Maybe maybe you would um, have an easier blending time, but with the soluble paints, I didn't really want to risk it, and I didn't want to have... A harder time cleaning up my brushes since it's water-based so what I'm saying I guess is that I think you can have a fine time painting without that aspect I'll have to work with it a little more and see if like you can do certain reflection tricks and things like that um, I think because I'm using water in here it's probably allowing me a little bit more flow a little more liquidity to the paint Again, I'm rambling, but these are just my thoughts while it's still fresh in my mind. Um, and that's just kind of where I'm at with it. But it's definitely fun. I mean, if you're looking for, you know, you want to try the oils, you know, you can pick up a set of, of the oils. You get like seven or eight paints in the set of the Windsor & Newton Artisan set. Now, I did try to put a little regular linseed oil that I had from before on my palette and mix that in, and it seemed to help with thinning. So when my water-soluble linseed oil comes, I'm anxious to try that. Now, there's also some drying agents and things you can use. I don't know. I'm going to have to see how long this painting takes to dry. My last one, um, it's pretty dry, the one that I did last week, but... It took, it took a few days to dry. I mean, it's, it's pretty dry now, but along the edges, when I touch it with my fingers, there's still wet paint on there. So, it, you know, oil paint, you put it on thicker, takes longer to dry. I mean, it's been drying for like a week. And that one was on canvas panel. So here now, I'm just going in and I'm just uh, going to paint in this water area. Um, <clears throat> I'm just using ultramarine blue. In that set, there's cerulean blue, but I, I wanted to keep, you know, the colors similar to the sky here. So I didn't crack that one open. Um, I think there's romber in there. I didn't use that. Um, and there's also cad red hue in there, which I don't really use, but I did try to use it to make black. Um or at least a really dark color. I mean, I got kind of close, but 
it either leaned to the red or the blue. I don't know. I'd rather not mess around with that. I'd rather just have like a black on hand or a, at the very least a Payne's gray. And right now I'm thinking, what what can I order? Can I order Payne's? Should I order Payne's gray or should I just go straight to black? I can always mix a little blue in. I don't know. Um, but I've always relied on that with the watercolor and 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 kind of crutched on uh, the Payne's gray. Now again, I'm coming back in with some cad yellow hue. Actually, I think I went to lemon yellow here. That's the other color that's in there. They give you a couple of yellows, um, which is brighter, as you can see. Um, and just tapping that around on the, on the grasses down below. Definitely interesting, definitely a fun process. So now I'm going to just, I'm putting some banks in here with some uh, of the uh, burnt umber. And I mixed a little blue in it to darken it up a little bit. And while I have this on my brush, I'm just going to try to put some little trees and things in the background. Eh, it's not exactly the colors that I wanted. Um, with all this blending and getting different colors on your brush, things want to go gray very easily. It's so easy to go to the gray side. And a, a light gray as well, so um, something just to bear in mind. Now, of course, you could let it dry and, you know, go in layers, but that would be uh, sort of defeat the whole purpose of the this kind of fast and loose thing I'm going for. I wanted to kind of carry over into this a fast and loose wet and wet with a hake brush. We'll see how it goes. I want to see how the hake reacts now that um, I've used these water-soluble oils on there, and hopefully the brush stays a little softer. We'll see. If worse comes to worse, then I'll just switch to a synthetic brush, but I think not using thinners or anything like that on the hake it won't be as... Uh, uh, harsh on the bristles. I mean, I have seen some artists using hake brushes in oil. Um, not really for as m a majority of the painting. I'm just taking my card here with a little white on there and seeing how that works just to create a little water effect. You could use a palette knife for that too. So here now, um, I've dipped into the sap green and I mixed it with a little yellow ochre. I think raw sienna would have been better. I don't. I'm not a fan of these greens. They they look. Uh, they just don't look realistic. So it's something I'm gonna have to work on. Again, if, if the Payne's gray is something I've always kind of gone into. So, get that, you know, realistic grass colors and realistic leaf colors that I'm looking for. You know, some people like the brighter colors too, so it's not entirely a bad thing. 
but uh, I like a darker green. So here I'm going to take a little bit of a smaller brush and I'm going to just put in some wa some water effects along the bank here. Excuse my hair. <laughs> um, I'm just kind of dabbing out some of that. It's just a little too, uh, it's just a little too much. I think that's a little better. Just soften up that tree a little bit. So I've got some uh, Arches oil paper on order. I'm expecting it to come this week. And from what I understand, the oil paper, it's relatively a new thing in the last few years, I guess. And the oil paper does not require any gesso. You can just paint right on it. So I'm anxious to try that. Um, but I did buy some white acrylic gesso, and I, I coated the paper before I used it. So if you want to use regular paper um, or board or whatever, you can use the gesso over it. But if you want something that's, like, ready to go... Um, the arches paper, like I said, I'm anxious to try that. So in the next episode of this, next week, um, I will be using that product. So I hope you're enjoying this and following me in this little, little journey here as I go along and uh, learning a few things from scratch. You know, you can learn from some of these guys. There's excellent artists out there. There's tons of them on YouTube. Um, but none of them really focus what it's like for somebody just starting out and so we can learn together and i'm just putting in a little bit of blue mixed in with that green over there just to i don't know get some color going those things looked those trees looked a little too gray so the things I'd like to do for the future is I definitely want to get like a dark, like a black or a gray. And then I need to start, I think, putting on thinner layers, maybe using a little thin linseed oil. Um, and making sure that I can stick the paint on top. That's That's one of the bigger challenges if you're trying to do wet and wet. So this one here is finished. I'm just taking a card and scratch, scratching in some sticks. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm, I'm very, very interested. Um, and if you enjoyed this, I hope you did. And let's uh, take a close view and then see it in a virtual frame. So here it is. You can see the mountains and the scraping and the clouds, how they came out. I, I think it turned out pretty decent. I mean, for this, um, I had oil painted in the past. Now, it's been three years. So this is my second oil painting in three years. Um, and I did maybe three back when I tried it the first time. So this is like my fifth oil painting. <laughs> um, and let's see it in the virtual frame. Here it is. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your week.